All right, everyone, welcome back to another video in my series on the Roman world and Christianity. Uh, first of all, I got to apologize for my appearance right now. Uh, it is a little bit later in the day than I normally record, and I've already worked out. Um, so, you know, hair's a little must, beard is a little must, but hey, we'll still plow through it and get through this video. All right, today's video is going to be the first in a series of three videos where we're going to talk about the factors that led to the downfall of the Western Roman Empire. And this first one is going to focus on the crisis of the third century and really when things started going wrong for the Roman Empire, when things started to go bad. So where do we leave off? All right, we talked about the rise of the Roman Republic, um, which turned into the Roman Empire, of course. Uh, we mentioned how Emperor Augustus was the first Roman Empire, and uh, they established a system that ended up kind of maintaining a lot of peace and prosperity and stability throughout the empire, even when you had some not-so-great emperors like Caligula or Nero. Um, Augustus' system was really predicated on having, one, rule of law, so nobody was above the law, and two, having a government run by a civil service system, which could have been freed slaves, could have been plebeians, could have been anybody involved in running that government system. All right, so that led to that period that we call the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, which again was that period of about 200 years of flourishing trade, free trade, prosperity. Uh, this also enabled the spread of art and architecture and literature, but it also enabled the spread of ideas like Christianity. This is how Christianity began to spread and rise in the Roman Empire. This is really the era that was seen as the pinnacle of Roman achievement, especially when you look at, say, like the 100s, CE. That was really the top of the line for that empire. So you had multiple emperors ruling during this time, um, but historians generally agree that it was the end of the reign of the emperor Marcus Aurelius, who reigned from 161 to 180 CE. That was kind of seen as the end of the Pax Romana and the beginning of when things started to go downhill for the Roman Empire. All right, so when we talk about all these causes for the fall of the Western Roman Empire, I mean, there are a lot that we're going to take a look at over the course of these next three videos. But political causes, right? You had to deal with poor leadership. You had to involve with the military getting involved in politics when those military leaders weren't elected or didn't get their positions based on competence sometimes. You had long periods of civil war and unrest. The, emperor, the empire split in half at one point. We're going to talk about that in the next video. As far as the social reasons, again, the Roman people just stopped caring as much about the empire as it continued to grow and as they had less and less of a say in the way that it was run. That lack of interest led to a lot of low confidence in the empire, which also contributed to things like disloyalty, lack of patriotism, and corruption among those that were involved in the government system. Finally, throughout the Roman Empire, you also had a big decline in population due to disease and famine. One of the things we're really going to focus a lot on in this video is the economic factors behind the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, a lot of things contributed to this, and it was more than just poor harvests and disease. You also had disruption of trade because you had all these military issues, a lot of Germanic tribes who were conducting raids on the ships from pirates and then also these tribes that were raiding the Roman road system and making it less safe to trade, which meant less prosperity throughout the empire. You also had a lot of increased economic inequality with this growing system of slavery, high government spending. Another big thing to note was that at this point, the Roman Empire stopped expanding. It stopped growing and conquering new lands, and that led to a lack of war plunder. One of the things about the Roman Empire was that its growth was one of the fueling aspects of its prosperity. When they would conquer a new land, they would plunder a lot of the wealth and valuable things that they had there. 
when they stopped conquering new lands, that went away, and that hurt their economy. Finally, they had high tax burdens and runaway inflation. We're going to talk about that in the next slide. And then when it comes to military issues, we're going to talk about that in this video as well. But they faced a lot of threats for, from Germanic tribes as well as pirates out in the seas. Uh, they had a lack of good pay for soldiers, and this created a need for disloyal mercenary armies. All right, so let's talk about the Roman economy and the issues that they had. Now, a lot of people oftentimes think economics, ew, that's kind of like the boring part of history. But a lot of this is really what contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire. And it's relevant and pertinent in our world still today. So, as I mentioned in the last slide, hostile Germanic tribes, as well as sea pirates, really went through and began disrupting a lot of the trade that the Roman Empire counted on. Another thing they counted on was that war plunder. So being able to conquer new lands and plunder, loot the valuables from that land. When they stopped doing this, it meant that their economy would go in trouble. And as this happened, they began to drain a lot of the gold and silver from their government treasury. Now, with this happening, the government was continuing to spend a lot of money. And they realized that they were running out of gold and silver to coin new money. So they started mixing in things like lead and tin and iron. And this created what is known as inflation. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that vocabulary word, inflation, um, think of it this way. If you've ever had a grandparent talk to you about how a Big Mac at McDonald's used to only cost 40 cents, or how a movie theater ticket used to only cost a dollar, or whatever it might be, that is kind of inflation at play. What happens is the government puts more money into the system and when that happens, the money loses its value because there's a higher supply of it. And then when money loses its value, it takes more money to buy the basic everyday things that you need to buy. And that means prices are going to go up and less people can afford things in the end. That is inflation. And you see this graph right here. It talks about the silver content of a Roman denarius. A denarius, by the way, was the primary coin that they used in their empire. But notice, over time, that coin contained less and less silver over time. So really, it became less valuable as they started mixing other elements and other metals into the coin. Finally, Rome's country and its population was also very weakened by disease. Uh, one of the most noteworthy things was an outbreak of malaria that swept through the Italian peninsula in the 200s. And a lot of people believe that this came from a network of African traders because malaria is a disease native to Africa. All right, we'll also talk a little bit about the military turmoil and the political turmoil that was going on in Rome. So, <sighs> As people became less and less engaged and less and less interested in the government in the Roman Empire, you saw a lack of patriotism and a lack of regular Roman citizens signing up to serve in the army. Remember, I talked about this when we discussed Roman society at first. Participation in military service used to be very highly valued in Roman society. You could not serve as a member of a senate or a consul if you had not served time in the Roman legions. This wasn't the case anymore. And because there was a lack of citizens willing to fight in the army, the Roman leaders were forced to pay for mercenaries to fight their battles for them. Mercenaries are soldiers who fight strictly for pay. They don't fight for love of their homeland, they don't fight for patriotism. They're only fighting to get paid. So you can imagine they're not going to be as loyal. And if things start to get bad, they might not fight as hard for your country. And a lot of these mercenaries weren't even Romans. Many of them were members of Germanic tribes or Persians or Egyptians in some cases. 
And what this generally created was a sense of indifference toward the empire. Similar to when you had the collapse of the Roman Republic, you began to see that soldiers were more loyal to the generals that paid them rather than to the Roman Empire itself. So in summary, there are a lot of factors that contributed to Rome's decline. It wasn't just any one event or any one invasion that ended the Western Roman Empire. You had weak leadership, which led to a lack of interest in politics among the Roman people. As those Roman people cared less about politics, their lives came, became more about achieving and getting material possessions than they were about serving the empire. You also had this high cost of government spending, lack of new plunder and new money coming into their system. And because of that, again, they began to coin more money the money lost its value and prices began to rise quite significantly. All of these helped to ruin the Roman economy. And finally, in general, the Roman military began to lose much of its prestige. Gone were the days of the really proud legionnaires of the Roman army, and they were being replaced more and more by foreign mercenaries. And the next big factor that would lead to the fall of the Western Roman Empire was when the empire actually split in half between the West and the East. And that's what I'm going to address in our next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Again, look forward to sharing that next one about the uh, split of the Roman Empire because that will feed into some of your lessons and activities on the Byzantine Empire, which is our next unit. You guys take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.